Hi everybody, it's Miss Gilligan again. I'm so excited to be back with you to continue talking about our fiction story, Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. I know that fiction stories are written to entertain us, and I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun reading about Norman the last time we were together. Before we move on today, let's review what it is that we did the first time we read Not Norman. We started by completing a web where we brainstormed other pets that someone might have. In our story, Norman the goldfish was the pet, but we thought of other pets like a dog, a cat, a turtle, and a bird. And then you had a chance to think about and write about and maybe even draw a picture about a pet that you think is amazing. Maybe one you have now or one you'd like to have. We also talked a little bit about our Shape Go map because today our learning target is I can retell a story. We're going to revisit Not Norman today and we're going to look at the beginning, the middle, and the end so that we can retell a story. So we'll reread, re but we'll stop along the way to complete our Shape Go map. So let me put up the big map that we can write on. Okay, so I am going to reread the story, but you'll see that I have it marked for beginning, middle, and end. I'm going to read the beginning, and then we're going to stop and we're going to think together and I'm gonna think out loud so you know what I'm thinking, and we're gonna complete our Shape Go map to retell the story. So here we go. Not Norman, a goldfish story. Not Norman. When I got Norman, I didn't wanna keep him. I wanted a different kind of pet. Not Norman. I wanted a pet who could run and catch, or one who could climb trees and chase strings. A soft, furry pet to sleep on my bed at night. Not Norman. All Norman does is swim. You guys remember this? What does Norman do? He swims around and around and around and around and around and around and around. And around. That's it, Norman, I decide. I'm trading you for a good pet. Norman doesn't move. Not even a fin twitches. How can I trade him like this? No one will want a sorry looking fish in a gunky bowl. When I drop Norman into his nice clean bowl, he starts dipping and flipping, flapping his fins around. He looks so goofy, I have to laugh. Don't think that just because you made me laugh, I'm going to keep you, I tell him. Tomorrow, you're out of here. Norman blows a stream of bubbles. All right, so we're going to stop there and think of that as the beginning of our story. So, as good readers, when we retell a story, we start with the beginning. And we think about who are the characters, what is the setting, and what is the problem? So I want you to think for a minute, and then I'm gonna think out loud to see if you're thinking what I'm thinking. So I want you to think about who are the characters in the beginning of Not Norman. Let's think. I can also look back in the text So I'm going to think out loud for you. Even though I know in the very beginning of the book, I see these two characters who I'm guessing are mom and dad. 
I know that when I retell a story, I want to think of the main characters that the story is mostly about. So in the beginning of this story, there are two main characters, the boy and Norman. Thumbs up if you were thinking what I was thinking. So on my Shape Go map under characters, I'm going to write the boy. And I'm going to write Norman. I don't know the boy's name, so I just wrote the boy. But notice, I used a capital N for Norman because that is his name, so I knew I needed a capital letter. Next, I'm going to think about the setting. At the beginning of the story, where were the boy and Norman most of the time? So again, let's think, and it's okay to look back in the book. Now I'm going to think aloud, and you think about if you're thinking what I'm thinking. The setting of the story in the beginning, where the story takes place. I'm going to say it's inside and outside of the boy's house, because sometimes they're inside, and sometimes it looks like he went outside with his wagon and took Norman out, and then they're back inside. So for the setting, I'm going to say inside, and outside, of the boy's house. And now I need to think about what is the problem in the story? And I think the text gives me a lot of clues as to what the problem is. On the very first page, it says, I wanted a different kind of pet, not Norman. And then the boy describes the kind of pet he would like and the things he would like his pet to be able to do instead of just swimming around and around and around. And then the boy says, I'm trading you for a good pet. So the problem in the story is the boy is not happy with having a goldfish as a pet and he wants a different pet. So I'm going to put that down here on my shape go map at the beginning for problem. So I'm going to say the boy wants a different up if you agree. And now I'm going to keep reading and we're going to read to the middle of the story. The next day I take Norman to school with me. If I talk him up real good during show and tell, maybe someone will want him. On the way there we see my friend Austin. Austin has a real cool dog and seven puppies. Want to swap one of your pups for Norman, I ask? Who's Norman? asked Austin. My goldfish, I say. By the time I rescue Norman, half his water is gone. I'm sorry, I tell Norman when we get to school. I'm really sorry. He just stares at me, all googly-eyed. Finally, it's my turn to show and tell. Just as I start to talk about goldfish, Emily shouts, Jenny's gone! Who let my snake loose? And notice here the boy says, Norman, one amazing fish. Because remember, his problem is he wants a different pet. So he's trying to convince somebody that Norman is so amazing that maybe they'll trade. Does anyone hear the story of how I got Norman? Does anyone even ask to hold his bowl? No. They're all jumping and screaming and chasing the snake. Not Norman. He's looking right at me. 
Thanks for listening, I tell him. That afternoon, we go to my music lesson. As soon as it's over, I'm taking Norman back to the pet store. I take out my tuba and begin to play. Do you remember how the tuba sounds? Bom, 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 ba, 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 boo, bo, 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 be. I glance over at Norman. He's swaying back and forth. Glug, 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 he mouths. Look, Norman's singing, I say. Pay attention, snaps Maestro, and I try to play the proper notes. Maestro makes me stay for extra practice. By the time my lesson is over, it's too late to go to the pet store. Don't think that just because you like my music, I'm going to keep you, I tell Norman. He glugs. That night, I'm sound asleep when scream! Scritch! What's that noise? Scratch! Scritch! Screech! Yikes! There's something at the window. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I spot... Do you remember who the boy spots? Norman! He isn't scared. He isn't swimming around in circles either. He glugs and gives me a little wave. I'm not alone. Together, Norman and I slide open the curtains. It was just a broken tree branch. Thanks for watching out for me, Norman. All right, I'm gonna stop there for the middle of the story. Now, on my Shape Go map, when I retell a story, in the middle, I need to think of the important events. And I can't tell everything that happened in the middle of the story, but I want to think about the most important events and how they relate back to what the problem is. Because I know in the beginning, the boy doesn't want Norman as a pet. He wants a different pet, and he says he's taking him back to the pet store. But I know that in the middle of the story, some important things happen with Norman. The first important event that I think I'm going to put on my map is that when nobody at all is listening to the boy during show and tell, the only one who's looking right at him and listening is Norman. And the boy says, thanks for listening, I tell him. So for this event, I'm going to put down Norman is a good listener. And as the story continues in the middle, the next thing that happens with Norman and the boy is Norman sings along and he kind of dances along as the boy is practicing. And the boy realizes that Norman likes his music. So the next event I'm going to list is that Norman likes the boy's music. So, so far, two important events in the middle of the story are both events that show the boy what a good pet Norman is. Norman's a good listener. He looks right at the boy and he listens when he has something to say. And he listens as the boy practices his tuba and he likes his music and he dances along with him. And then something that's really important is when the boy is in bed at night and he's feeling scared because he hears these noises and he doesn't know what these noises are, he spots out of the corner of his eye Norman. And Norman's looking right at him. And he gives him a little wave so the boy knows that he is not alone. 
and Norman goes with the boy over to the window where the noises are coming from. So he is not alone when he opens the curtains to see what it is. And the boy says, thanks for watching out for me, Norman. So I think that's another important event that Norman watches out for the boy and lets him know you're not alone. So let's put that here. I'm going to say Norman watches out for the boy. So, to review before we finish, this is what I like to do as a reader. I stop and I think about what I've read so far to make sure I understand. And it helps me when it's time to retell. So, so far in the beginning, we have our characters, the boy and Norman. They're inside and outside of Norman's house. And the problem that we learn about in the very beginning of the story is the boy wants a different pet. He doesn't want Norman and he wants to trade him in. But then different events happen through the middle of the story, like Norman being a good listener and Norman liking the boy's music and dancing to it as he plays. And then really importantly, Norman watching out for the boy and making sure he knows you're not alone when he feels afraid. And now we're gonna to go to the end of the story. And what we wanna think about at the end is, how is the problem solved? What happens that solves the problem of the boy thinking, this isn't the pet I want? And why or how does that problem get solved? So let's go on and finish reading the end of the story. On Saturday, I take Norman to the pet store, just like I said I would. I look at the cats and dogs and snakes and birds. I look at the hamsters and mice and lizards too. They all look like good pets, but they are not Norman. When I got Norman, I wasn't sure I wanted to keep him, but now even if I could pick any pet in the whole world, I wouldn't trade him, not Norman. And there's that sign that he made. Remember when he had the sign the first time? He wrote it, Norman, what amazing fish to try to convince somebody to trade and take Norman so he could get a different pet. By the end of our story, he has that same sign, but it's sitting on top of Norman's tank because the boy has realized, because of the important events throughout the story, that Norman really is one amazing fish and one amazing pet. So if our problem was the boy wanted a different pet, by the end, the solution is the boy realizes that Norman is one amazing pet and he would never trade him for any other pet. So for the solution, I'm gonna say, the boy realizes, that means he comes to learn. He learns that Norman is one amazing pet. Norman is one amazing pet. And if he knows his pet is amazing, then he no longer wants a different pet. Wouldn't trade him for the world. So, as good readers, when we're asked to retell a story, this is what we want to think about. What happened in the beginning, the middle, and the end. And in the beginning, we include our characters, our setting, and our problem. Then we read carefully to identify the important events that lead us to the end where that problem is solved, the solution. 
I hope you enjoyed rereading Not Norman, a goldfish story. Remember that good readers reread stories many times. Now you're going to have a chance today to read a story and practice using a shape go map to retell the story. It was nice spending time with you. Be safe, be well, know that we love you and we miss you, and I hope to see you again.